Screech by Taran MCT Read by Oak Shadow 5 Chapter 36 When Izuku opened his eyes, he immediately knew his wing had finished regrowing. It was only 2 a.m. and he was wide awake. With a near manic grin, Izuku jumped out of bed and quickly spread his wings, paying careful attention to the newly regrown left one. It looked the same as it had before it had gotten ripped off, which was a little bit annoying, since Izuku had been hoping it would be his full added feathers. But at the same time, he was glad it was the same as his other. He didn't want to have mismatched wings. He opened the patio door and quickly flew onto the roof. He wasn't going to be able to fly very far for a while longer, but he wanted to start exercising his wing now. Izuku started flapping his wings, fast and hard enough to get just the tiniest bit of lift, but not enough to actually take off. He would wait for training at school to do some flying. His wing wouldn't be able to support him for long right now, and if he pushed himself too soon, he'd sprain it and cause the wing to retract again for another few days. Izuku wasn't paying attention to how long he had remained on the roof, but he could see rays of sunlight starting to peek over the horizon by the time he heard some of his classmates moving around in their rooms below. Izuku quickly hopped back down to his room and started getting ready for class. Just as he was about to open the door to walk out, a sudden mischievous thought struck him and he untied his tie, untucked his shirt and messed up his hair. He wasn't going to tell anyone that his wing had grown back. Not just yet. He wanted to see how long it would take everyone to realize that he was only acting sleep and lethargic. Izuku was sure his dad would see through the act within a minute. Same with his papa. But what about Toshi and Denki? The rest of the class. Izuku suppressed a giggle as he opened the door and went downstairs for breakfast. Shota walked into the classroom and automatically glanced at his kids. He couldn't help it. He was their dad. At first glance, everything seemed normal. Hitoshi had a set on his hand, dark circles under his eyes showing just how little sleep he got the night before, but still paying attention to his surroundings and ready for the day's lesson to begin. Izuku, however, was a different story. On the surface, Izuku looked no different from the past few weeks. Slumped on a seat, eyes half closed, hair and clothes rumpled. But he was missing the dark circles under his eyes that had been present for the past few weeks, and there was a mischievous twinkle in his eyes. Shota quickly ducked into his capture scuff to hide his grin. Izuku was back to normal. Glad to have you back, Shota whispered, quietly enough to where only Izuku and maybe Jiro would have heard him. Izuku gave him a subtle wink and Shota got on with the day's activity. All right, Hellions, today we're going to be having a special presentation. You're going to be learning about work studies and to explain what they are and why they are important, you'll be hearing from a few third-year students. But that won't be until after lunch. For now, keep it to a dull roar. I'm taking a nap. Denki was confused. That's not really something new, honestly, but today was really making him second-guess himself. Denki watched as Izuku had stumbled into the classroom that morning. He had looked more alert despite appearing exactly the same as he had for the past month. He had been insisting that Denki not wait for him in the mornings, since he had either been late or just barely on time all month. So Denki was already in class when Izuku showed up, and as Izuku sat down for class, Denki kept his eyes on Izuku, checking for more signs that Izuku might be back to normal. He had almost been convinced that Izuku was back to being himself again, but as soon as Ezra sensei flopped back into a sleeping bag, Shoto made a comment about Izuku only pretending to be exhausted still. Izuku didn't say anything to refute him, but the rest of the class was calling Shoto a conspiracy theorist, and no one thought he was right. But was he? Denki wasn't sure. He wanted to say that Izuku was himself again, but he really was acting the same as he had the past month. Denki wanted to know. He really did. But if Izu was doing this as some sort of logical ruse, then he didn't want to mess it up. Denki didn't want to risk Jiro hearing him ask Izuku if he was okay, so he had decided to either wait for lunch or for her to go to the restroom, whichever came first. Luckily, during a break in modern lit, she got up and left the classroom. Denki glanced at his boyfriend and whispered, Izu? Izuku slowly turned his head over to Denki and gave him a soft smile. Shoto's right, isn't he? You are better? That soft smile of his turned sharp for just a second, and he winked at Denki. Denki was just barely able to hold back a giggle at that. You're trolling the class? He asked to confirm, and got the slightest and most subtle nod from Izuku. Okay. Denki turned his attention back to his classwork. If Izuku wanted to troll the class, well, what kind of a boyfriend would he be if he didn't help him? Shoto was slowly losing his mind, and Izuku was very silently and sadly causing it. 
Hitoshi was sure Denki was in on her too, and he was having the time of his life. Hitoshi didn't know how many of the class was actually in on the ruse, or if they truly thought Shota was just seeing connections that weren't there, but Shota's hair was an absolute mess from how many times he'd run his hands through it in frustration. I know you're messing with us, you little shit. You finally starting to become a troll like your brother. Shota hissed out to Izuku, manic look in his eyes. Okay, yikes, dude. Give my Zuzu a break. Can't you see he's still out of it? Denki defended Izuku, pulling him close protectively. Why can't you see that he's just faking it? Shoto shrieked as he pulled out his hair. All right, Shoto, I'm going to need you to calm down. You're getting too worked up. Look, you're steaming. Hitoshi said, gesturing to the steam coming off of Shoto's head. Take a deep breath for me, yeah? Shoto glared at Hitoshi and then closed his eyes and did as asked, cutting off the steam and getting his quirk back under control. Okay, I'm good. I'm fine. It's all okay. If Hitoshi hadn't seen it, he never would have believed it. But Izuku plainly smirked at Shota and winked at him. Son of a bitch! Izuku could feel Shota glaring at him, but he didn't care. Toga Tamirio had challenged the entire class to a match, and Izuku wanted to know what made him so special, why he was at the top of the big three. He had seen Amajiki Tamaki working as Sun Eater before with Fat Gum, so he knew why he was there. And Ryoku was a badass, so if she was hosting Hado, then she'd be good too. But Togata was a mystery. Sinai so was more investigation and analytics. He wasn't really in the front lines. So, when the rest of the class went into the locker rooms to change, Izuku gave Dad a glance and got a nod in return. Izuku would be able to participate if he wanted to. And he very much wanted to. Izuku was having a heck of a time ignoring Shota's constant glass, though. He had almost cracked and started laughing so many times. He was surprised the majority of the class hadn't figured it out yet. Just as Izuku finished dressing in the locker room, Shoto stood next to him. How much longer are you going to keep this act up? Izuku let out a long, drawn-out sigh. I don't know what you're talking about, Shoto. Izuku almost snorted when he heard Shoto growl. Hey, Sho, can you carry me to the gym? Shoto narrowed his eyes at Izuku, clearly looking for the trick, but then sighed and let Izuku climb on his back. Thank you. Izuku let his eyes drift closed, still pretending to be exhausted. But as they got close to the gym, he gave Shoto a little hug. I know I'm being annoying today. Sorry. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Shoto's steps faltered as he snapped his head around to look at him. Izuku gave him a little smirk. No one will ever believe you, though. Izuku let out a chirp of surprise as Shoto dropped him and stomped off. Dusting himself off, Izuku got up and slowly wandered to the gym where everyone else was listening to Togata explain that he was going to fight them all. Fifteen against one. Sarah raised his head and then smiled a lazy smile. Fourteen, actually. A resident owl is recovering from an injury. Izuku waved sheepishly at Togata and then moved to stand near his dad. The other students all got into a rough formation, the same one they had started the provisional license exam with. And all of a sudden, Togata's clothes fell off and he disappeared. Seconds later, he reappeared with a punch to Koda's gut before disappearing once again. It only took two more times for Izuku to realize what he was doing, and when he did, he reached out for his dad's sleeve and gave a gentle tuck. You can have a turn once everyone else is done, Dad said, ruffling Izuku's hair. Let him have his fun first. Izuku nodded and leaned against his dad's side as he watched the third-year student take down every single one of his classmates. Hmm, I thought that would take longer, Izuku muttered. You ready for your turn, Zu? Dad asked, and Izuku hooted eagerly. So, can any of you tell me what I have that you all don't? Togata asked cheerfully as he pulled his clothes back on. A lack of modesty, Hitoshi suggested, causing a few to laugh. A good guess, but no. Togata laughed along with the rest. Experience? Can anyone tell me what my quirk is? Togata. Dad interrupted him. Yes, sensei? You have one more challenger. Izuku stepped forward with an excited bounce on a step. I knew it. See, I called it. I fucking called it. Shoto jumped up and started pointing at Izuku with his manic grin again. Oh, yes. That reminds me, Izuku, who all realized you were playing a logical ruse. Dad asked. Izuku unfurled his wings and gave a gentle flap. Shoto and Denki for sure. I'm not sure if Hitoshi realized before I teased Shoto while Toshi was looking though. Izuku shrugged and flapped his wings again. Can I fight him now? Sure. Try not to show off too much, kid. Izuku flapped his wings hard enough to get some lift and glided into the middle of the gym where the rest of the students were slowly getting to their feet and heading to the sidelines. 
Hellions, I want you to pay attention to this match. His dad called out to the rest. Togata pointed out that he had more experience than the lot of you, and that was the main reason for your defeat. What do you think will happen when someone with even more experience goes against him? Haru tilted her head. But, Sensei, everyone keeps saying that Mirio is almost good enough to be fully pro now. Shota hummed in amusement. We had to talk the commission out of giving Izuku his full license. So, while he officially is only a provisional hero, Screech is an unofficial underground pro hero already. Shota smirked then. Izuku, show them why I was never able to catch you. Izuku nodded and chirped. I'm ready when you are, senpai. Togata grinned wide at Izuku and then disappeared. Izuku stepped to the left, and when Togata reappeared in front of him, Izuku surprised him with a leg sweep that would have knocked him down if he hadn't activated his quirk again and vanished back into the ground. Izuku gave another flap of his wings and jumped nearly 10 meters away, giggling when Togata reappeared, looking around and wondering why Izuku wasn't where he was supposed to be. Senpai, over here! Izuku called out of the grin. Togata blinked at him before once again disappearing into the ground, and Izuku, still in a playful mood from the start of the day, flapped his wings and moved to another part of the gym. Senpai! Izuku called to Togata, when he once again looked around for Izuku, wondering where his young Kohei went. What are you doing over there? How did he... Togata whispered before shaking his head. Doesn't matter. He disappeared back into the ground. This time, instead of flying to a remote part of the gym, Izuku got into a fighting stance and started a kick before Togata had even appeared. Izuku attempted his kick perfectly, and as soon as his kick was at the strongest point, Togata appeared in front of him and took the kick to the stomach, falling instantly. Vengeance for my fallen classmates! Izuku chirped. Togata coughed and then started laughing. Wow, Kuhai, that was something else! Izuku gathered up Togata's clothes and then brought them to him. Thanks! With another flap of his wings, Izuku glided back over to the rest of the class, putting his wings away and sliding under Denki's arm. You done trolling the class? Denki asked as he kissed the top of Izuku's head. Izuku just nodded. Shota ducked his face into his scarf as Togata reached the front of the class. Well, as I was going to ask before my final match, who can tell me what my quirk is? Kirishima raised his hand. It's some kind of teleportation quirk, isn't it? Nope, my quirk is called permeation. Izuku wasn't paying attention to the explanation of how Togata's quirk worked. He had figured it out himself within a few minutes of the initial class battle. And besides, Denki was playing with the cell in that way he knew Izuku laughed. Izu. Hitoshi nudged him slightly and Izuku jolted his head up. I'm here! He exclaimed, embarrassingly loud, much to the amusement of everyone. Dad simply raised an eyebrow at him and asked, Can you share with the class so you figured out Togata's quirk? Oh, that's easy. I could hear him under the ground. He replied simply with a shrug. His breathing stopped and he started to just fall, but his heartbeat kept going so I could track him. Then when he started rising, there was a slight sound of... Displacement? I don't know, but it's similar to the sound of fish makes when they are underwater. As soon as he was back above ground, his breathing started up again. I also noticed that before he disappeared, he looked around to find his next target. All of that led me to assume he can't hear, see, breathe, anything while his quirk is active. How long did it take you to figure that out? Dad asked, grin hidden, but Izuku could hear in his voice. Hmm, by the time he took down Shoji? Yeah, he got Koda and I had heard his heartbeat move. Then when he dropped back into the ground after Sato, I had seen him disappear. So when he took down Shoji, I had figured it out. It was less than 30 seconds, Carol, as he whispered on the other side of the group. Izuku nodded with a smile. Yeah, like Senpai said, experience is a big deal. I started out of Screech when I was 12, so I've gone up against a few different quirks. At least this time he wasn't trying to kill anyone, and I had time to observe. Hey, Dad. Izuku asked as the whole family, including Kego, were sitting at dinner that night. Shota just grunted to show he heard. You'll do work studies, right? Now you said that not everyone's mentor for the internships would be able to host for work studies. Shota paused with his chopsticks halfway to his mouth and then put them back down. Izuku, your wings just grew back, and you said before that they won't be strong enough for you to be back to normal for a few weeks. Don't you think you should take the next few weeks to strengthen your wings and get back in the swing of things? Izuku pouted. But I wanted to do a work study. Shota shook his head. Not this time, Zoo. Maybe next time. Izuku's pout turned into a skull. Uh, a man of the perfect solution? Kigo hatched, causing everyone to look at him. 
So when I had Tokoyami for that week, I brought up the idea of maybe trying to fly to him. We decided to work on that during the work studies. How about it, baby bird? You want to come with me and see if we can get him flying? Your quirk analysis could help make this a lot easier. And then when teaching him in Dark Shadow how to move to fly, that could help you in exercising your wings. Izuku's face lit up and turned back to Shota. Can I do that? Then the next time work studies come around, I go back with you. Shota looked back and forth between Izuku and Kego before sighing and taking better food. Sure, Kego, don't let him do anything too strenuous. Yay, Izuku's wing grew back! He is back to normal again! Well, almost. And also, he showed Togata in that fight! Woo! But, anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed chapter 36 of Screech, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!